You ever heard of something called Dada or Dadaism? Mm -hmm. Deliberately being irrational, rejecting standard assumptions about beauty or organization or logic. It's an anti-aesthetic statement about the lameness of the status quo, kind of. Kind of. Art history class was a long time ago. Anyway, why am I trying to explain Dadaism on a cable news show 13 days from this big, giant, historic, crazy, important election that we're about to have? Well, it's because that's what I found myself Googling today in search of a way to make sense of the latest McCain Palin campaign ad. I'm Joe the Plumber. I'm Joe the Plumber. I'm Joe the Plumber. I'm Joe the Plumber. Do not adjust your TV machines. I cannot explain this, but it is for real. Maybe it's some sort of intentional stab at illogic? Are they trying to express disgust with the electorate by turning it into a world where people are solely identified by their first name, the word the, and an occupation? Uh, just the other day in New Mexico, I saw a sign that said, Ed the Dairyman, we can call him Tito the Builder, Phil the Bricklayer, and Rose the Teacher, and Karina the Nurse. We have Anne the Engineer, we have Dave the Cop. <laughs> We've got John the, John the only Republican in my high school. <laughs> Rachel the Mystified. <laughs> is, is this what the campaign has come to? It's just not clear what end they're aiming at with the Joe the Plumber, the gimmick thingy. Uh, what is easier to understand is the good old reliable political slime tactics that are happening alongside the Joe the Plumber stuff at the podium, like robocalls. Today, another McCain campaign robocall was uploaded to the internets. Hi, this is Rudy Giuliani, and I'm calling for John McCain and the Republican National Committee because you need to know that Barack Obama opposes mandatory prison sentences for sex offenders, drug dealers, and murderers. Thanks, Mayor 9-11, but you forgot to mention Willie Horton. While the McCain campaign seems to be tied up in knots over these robocalls, McCain's sort of for them, Palin's sort of against them, the Obama campaign has placed two feet firmly in the we're against them camp. Just ask Joe Biden. John Stop your ads. Bring down those robocalls. If it's about the economy, argue about the economy. Not about Barack Obama's character. Not about these scurrilous ads. John, stop these calls. So if you are that clearly against the calls, can you then go ahead and launch your own new robocall? Apparently... Yes, we can. If it's an anti-robocall robocall. Hi, this is Jerry Watermelon calling for the Campaign for Change. I live in Green Bay, and like you, I've been getting sleazy phone calls and mail from John McCain and his supporters viciously and falsely attacking Barack Obama. I used to support John McCain because he honorably served our country, but this year he's running a dishonorable campaign. Okay, so we now have anti-robocall robocalls. What's the next step? A robocall revolt? Yeah, as it turns out. Uh, one of the voices on your unfriendly neighborhood robocalls in West Virginia, Shaylee Cole, put her foot down and up and quit her job, saying this, quote, I told them I did not want to read it. They said either you read it or you go home. I told them I wasn't going to read it. They made me go home without pay for the rest of the day. I said I was unhappy with the situation, and I quit. <clears throat> You know, I think she will get a tax credit if Obama gets elected, by the way. <laughs> but will Obama get elected amid the squall of robocalling and mailing and Joe the plumbering from the McCain campaign? Is this the stuff that is tightening the races in places like Florida and Pennsylvania and Ohio and even Virginia? Joining us now is New York Times columnist Bob Herbert, or as he might be referred to at a McCain rally sometime soon, Bob the columnist. Bob the columnist. How are you, Rachel? <laughs> I, am, I am mystified, it has to be said. Do you think this name, the occupation <laughs> construct, is, is, is it an attempt at populism? I don't, I don't, I don't really understand. Sonic yeah. the Hedgehog, Bob the Builder, I don't... No, it's Dada. You it's know, Dada. John Dada lives. You know, actually seeing the clip of Rudy Giuliani reminded me of the old days when he was mayor of New York. And I was a columnist at the Daily News. It was like, that's the way Rudy was all the time. Attack, attack, attack. So they got the perfect guy for the robocalls. Do the robocalls, um, do they stick with the robocalls 
even with the obvious blowback, the obvious sort of tarnishing of the brand, right, for getting nailed for doing these things, particularly because so many of them, so many of them have such ugly scripts, do, do they risk that blowback and do they keep doing them because they are effective? Well, um, obviously they think they're effective, but the whole tact- all the tactics of the McCain campaign so far, has n- they have not been particularly effective. Mm-hmm. So I don't understand why sort of the, their whole strategy uh, doesn't change. The Republicans for the longest time now, the national Republicans, have uh, tried to, in big elections, demonize their opponents, use divisive uh, tactics and that sort of thing. And they've worked to a great extent. I mean, all of this is out of the Lee Atwater, Karl Rove playbook. I do think times have changed. And I think McCain has made um, a, a really bad error. Now, I don't know whether it's a fatal error. This, this election is not over. He may well get elected president. Mm-hmm. But I strongly believe that the McCain that so many people really liked as a politician before this campaign got heated up, the McCain that a lot of independents and even a lot of Democrats said, you know, I can live with that guy. You know, uh, he has sort of uh, tarnished that brand a great deal. I think that old McCain would have done much better against Barack Obama in this in this campaign. I'll add one more thing: the bounce that uh, he got after the uh, convention, after naming Sarah Palin as his vice presidential presidential camp candidate came because people really liked uh, Palin's personality. They liked her persona. They liked her style. Now, I know she's had trouble with some of the issues and had some trouble on network interviews and that sort of thing. But this decline in Palin's popularity and even respect for her, I think is also uh, associated with the fact that she's been used as an attack dog in this campaign. So it's no longer such a winning personality. It's, it's, a, it's a mean-spirited uh, personality. And I just don't think that's working, and especially not in this election. I would say that the Palin bounce, if I had to, um, if I had to come up with an explanation for it, it was that she was new. Mm-hmm. It was combined with the convention bounce, which is something that every campaign gets because it was essentially simultaneous with that. But she also, because she was new, felt like a new kind of Republican. Right, and I think true. that you're right, that in, the, in, in putting her in the probably inevitable role of, of launching the most vicious of the attacks from the campaign itself toward Obama and Biden, she ended up looking like a very old school Republican. And I wonder if you think that it is, particu- it is harder in this election, in 2008, to get away with the attack stuff because everything does get uploaded to the internet because you can't do anything under the radar. Uh, I think that's part of it, but I, I also think that the um, voters have seen what's gone on for the last eight years or so, and they really do want something different. They've seen these harsh tactics for more than the past eight years, and they and they think that you know Democrats and Republicans fighting each other, liberals and conservatives fighting each other, racial problems, all kinds of other uh, divisive things going on. They think that that has all combined to hurt the country badly. The United States is not in good shape right now. You add to that this profound economic crisis, and and I think a lot of voters are saying, you know, enough with that old stuff. A deal with this crisis, get together and work this out. You know, we're tired of that old stuff. I also think that there's been a generational change. The Lee Atwater was a long time ago. Karl Rove probably carried those kind of tactics um, as far as, as they could be carried. I think the country is ready for something different. Bob Herbert, New York Times columnist here, and, and maybe forever more, Bob the columnist. <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> Thank Rachel. you for being here. All right, bye.